Hello there. In this video, I am going to talk about how you can create something like you're seeing here. This is something I posted previously in a YouTube video, and this is based on a Blender Geometry Nodes user's uh, mini breakdown, and the guy is called BBBN19. And I'm going to put a link in the description and you can check it out and maybe you might want to try it for yourself, whether you can build something by for us based on that and then you can tell me how you did it because I'm sure there's a million way to do things and it'd be quite interesting. But anyways, uh, I'm going to walk you through this way I created it and I'm going to speed things up and then talk over it and see how that goes. But there will be a few compounds that you might need that aren't default bifrost. So whenever that's the case, I'm going to shout it out. I'm going to also try and put a link in the, the description so you can see where you can get it. All right, so let's start with this. So basically the first step is to create a plane scatter a bunch of points on the plane and then instance a leg or arm onto that plane. So here I'm creating a NURBS curve. It's going to be super simple, just a CV curve. And we can always make it more interesting later. So this is what I'm going to bring into the graph and uh, change the resolution, make sure it's evenly spaced kind of like a resample, and then I'm just simply scattering points onto the plane. Try some values. I mean, this is all up for grabs. We can always change it later uh, to see if it works. Create instances, and there we go. We've got a bunch of legs. Now, I want to make those a little more random in the Y rotation, so I can use randomize point rotation for that. Um, yeah, just zero out those numbers. And there we go. Now to make them a little easier to see, I'm going to change some display settings. First of all, I have to bake the instances. So now I've got a, a nice strand objects I can work with. And I'm going to use these two nodes to change the uh, shape. And I'm going to continuously uh, um, pause the graph just so it's more responsive. It's easier to work like that, so you might see things disappear, but you should have a visual feedback for that in the graph. All right. I think that's good enough. And now what I want is I want these instances to show up only within a given radius of this locator. So first of all, I have to connect the locator into the graph. I want the point position. And I can simply do that by connecting the world matrix to this uh, matrix plug in Bifrost. And now the, this translation here will be my locator position. So I can get the points in the radius with this node here, get points in radius. And the way I want to do this is I want to use this weights port on the create instances node. So I'm going to use a resize array node to set an array that's got as many elements as I got points. Set those values to zero. And then I want to set in this array the values to one where it found these points in radius. And when I do that and I change the radius to something bigger, we can see that's now working. And I can move that locator around. And that's the first step. So the next step is to make sure that these points are actually all coming from the locator so it looks a bit more like um, a creature. And here's where I use a custom compound. And this is where you want to check out Maxime's blog and show you exactly how you can create it. But the entire article is great. so. Check it out. Uh, bring that locator position into this compound, which, you know, this is not the most user-friendly way of doing it, but at the moment, I guess this is the way to go until we get a for each strand loop or something like that. In here, I've got access to all the point positions or for each strand individually. 
So I'm lerping the points toward the locator. And as you can see here, it's just lerping all the points equally, and we don't want that. So what we can do is we can use the point ratio property on this object, strands object, to define where this is actually going to happen. So we only, you know, you want, we want the end points to be 100% at the locator and then the, uh, like the finger, if you will, or the, le or the foot should stay more or less where it was. And so we can do that with the point ratio plugged into the fraction. So it's kind of working, but I have to reverse the direction on my curve. Depends how you drew it. But now we've got a, a basic setup done. We can make this look a bit more interesting by using an F curve so we can change where exactly or how exactly we want this to bend. And uh, we can also mess with the original curve like that, just scaling it or do whatever we want to get whatever we need. And now this is the basic effect. So what's missing uh, is the animation. And for that, I'm using another external compound called trim strands. Um, so you can see here that the U first parameter is what I want to control. And I want to remap something uh, to a zero to one value. And what I want to do here is I want to take each point position that's currently got a strand and I want to take its distance to the locator. And I want to remap that distance to a zero to one range so I can actually animate those strands. I hope that makes sense. And here I'm just getting the points, but you have to uh, note that I'm using a sort array because the points in radius node will sort things based on the distance. So it wouldn't match with our uh, sort of order of the strands, if that makes sense. So now I'm just simply subtracting, taking the length, and this is the value I want to remap. My radius is five. So this is my from end value and then it's just a matter of playing with the start value. But as you can see here, it's working. So we can change this from start value to get different sort of uh, looks in terms of the animation. But yeah, that's pretty much the effect. And to make this a little more solid, instead of just punching in the numbers there, I'm going to actually make this based on the radius. And then I can simply multiply this value by a sort of a percentage to be able to control this. So multiplying it by 0.8 would get me to four as we had before. And now if I play with the radius, this whole thing will still work. And that's pretty much the basic effect. As you can see here, it's not that complicated, I think, and it's not that many notes. Um, so now it's just a matter of making things look more interesting. And so the first thing I want to do is take that leg and make it uh, consist of multiple strands instead of just a single one. I'm going to bring that into the graph. What I got here then is a strands object, and I'm going to use that as my uh, instance geometry, apply the same settings, but you can see it's not quite working. And that's because my array down here is still the size, uh, you know, that matches the number of legs, but now each leg sort of consists of five strands. So in this array needs to be five times the size. So the way I'm doing this is using a for each loop and the max iteration should be the number of legs multiplied by the number of strands 
per leg, if that makes sense. We can use get strand structure for that. Multiply, plug those in. And in here, I'm just simply uh, creating the indices I can use with get from array. And I do that by dividing the current index by the strand count. And that way I have created the array that I need. And just to show you, I'm gonna print these indices I've created. So we should be able to see now that each index uh, is repeated five times and therefore I can use uh, get each value five times. So if I plug that in, we've now got the legs working more interesting. And uh, if I move it around, see that's kind of working. So of course you can play with all uh, with the values, with the radius, the amount of points, maybe scatter mode, blue noise, or something like that. So have a more even distribution. And then I can also show you how you can create uh, legs that are not all the same. I mean, they're rotated differently, but now what if we just create another leg, make some small adjustments, and of course, you know, you can spend a lot of time on that to make it look cool, but if I bring that in, just like I brought in the other one, same settings. And now we can see we've got more variation here. And at that point, it's just a matter of just adding more randomization or doing whatever you want from it. So we could come into my her strand compound and add some noise or turbulence. I'm going to simply add that to my point position. And uh, if I unpause it, we've now got some noise. Now, I'm not sure if I'm the greatest fan of this look, but just to show you, and uh, the problem now is that the fingers or the contacts aren't working anymore because we're applying the noise across the board. So we can use our point ratio uh, to multiply the noise by a point ratio going through an evaluate F curve to define exactly where that noise is applied. So I can set this to zero and then now with this shape we're sort of only applying the noise in the middle of the strand and uh, maybe we want to add some animation so we can add a time node plug that into time if it play we get some animation but I think I'm gonna not do that here and uh, yeah, maybe decrease the noise a bit and then finally, for the example I showed in the beginning, I just used the uh, create braids node from Maxime. And then that will look a little bit more like what I showed you in the beginning. And then you can, of course, play with those settings, change the size. And uh, this is pretty close. If I change the profile curve here, I think this is pretty close to what I showed you in the beginning. And then, of course, you can scatter your points on multiple objects, or you could come in and change the shape of that plane. And this would work. 